The surgery that removed her voice box due to cancer left Linda Ralston unable to speak without a voice prosthesis. I was blood from shoulder to shoulder, so I can't move my arms and shoulders very well. That's made tasks like packing her groceries at her local no-frills store hard. She says when she asked for help, staff told her they were too busy. There are more than 250 no-frills grocery stores across the country, and as the name suggests, they're meant to be nothing fancy. The idea is you pay lower prices, and in exchange, you do things like pack your own groceries. But when Ralston couldn't do it fast enough, causing a lineup, she says the owner told her not to come back without help. I said, are you telling me? Because I'm disabled, I can't shop here. And he said, yes, it's for the best. No Frills franchises are part of the Loblaw group of companies. When Ralston complained, Loblaw apologized, telling her she could come back. But she needed to call ahead to make sure someone was available to help her. I'm an adult. I'm not going to phone to get permission to go shopping. It also offered her $100 in compensation if she promised not to take action against the company. They can keep the $100. I'm going to tell anybody and continue with my human rights action. An advocate says what's needed are accessibility laws that set standards for all companies. Only three provinces have them. The only recourse in those who don't are individual human rights complaints. It's a very slow way to make change in society one person at a time. In an email to Go Public, Loblaw says it took immediate action when it heard from Ralston and addressed the issue directly with the store owner. The company has an accessibility policy online, but it tells Go Public it only applies to corporate grocery stores, not franchises. The No Frills owner wouldn't answer questions, calling it a human resources thing. Ralston says telling her story publicly was hard. I don't like having my budget or anything, but I was so upset by this. I wanted everyone to know. And while head office did apologize, she says she's still waiting for an apology from the store owner. Rosa Marcatelli, CBC News, Calgary.